Hey, I wanted to show you something really cool. Um, really slick. I think you're going to like this. So this is my tomato high tunnel. One of my high tunnels. It's uh, about 26 and a half by 118 feet long. Um, right now outside it's about 90, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have no forced ventilation on this greenhouse. It, and there's no wind. I mean, there, there's no wind out here at all right now. It's, it's pretty, which is kind of rare for this area. Uh, it's about 1130 or so in the morning, noon, thereabouts. But I want to show you something pretty neat. So these tomatoes, the principle with tomatoes is they transpire a lot of water. So they pull it out of the ground and they release it out of their leaves. And it's, it's different than like corn or uh, cabbage or eggplant, something like that. Those leaves are drier. They don't release as much water as tomatoes do. So keep in mind, it's about 91 right now, thereabouts. So I want to show you something as you go through this, as you walk into this greenhouse, you can feel that it's actually cooler than outside. And it's, it's not intuitive. You'd never guess that, thinking about it. Now, I just set, uh, I set a uh, thermometer over here. I want you to check this out. So right now, that reads about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So 85 degrees Fahrenheit inside the greenhouse next to the tomatoes. And I also put a, um, a thermometer outside a while ago. And so they should be reflective of actual temperatures inside and outside. So just keep in mind, you're 85 on the inside. And if I come over here and look on the outside um, thermometer, it's gonna be a little bit more. And that is not intuitive for a greenhouse. So if you look here, this is reading about 89 degrees Fahrenheit, 88 thereabouts. And that should be staggering to think about, that it's 85 on the inside and 88 on the outside without wind. And the reason for that is transpiration of the tomato plants. And what that raises is a really exciting opportunity that let, let's say you're trying to solve a future issue with climate change related housing. My vision, what I see is if you could enshroud a home with a greenhouse, you can make it through the harsh climates of the bitter cold north. But overheating in the summertime is a real issue. This is a solution right here. Normally, you're going to use like, a, you know, some kind of cooling mechanism, forced ventilation, a swamp cooler, something like that. But what this proof of concept establishes is you can do it naturally. And I want to be very clear about my ventilation. If you look, my gable ends or my hoop ends, that's it for openings. So I have the door open. You know, I have a vent here and a vent there. Minimal square footage. I only have two very small side vents, and they're worthy of taking a look at. One's not even open. So if you look here, there's a side vent that I have available. I don't even have that open. I do have a side vent over here. You can see on the side there. That's it. Just that little itty bitty side vent. That's like a, a two, two by four, two foot by four foot vent. And then on this end, minimal opening as well. I have a small uh, upper vent over here. And then this door, the double door. Otherwise, there's no ventilation in this structure. That's, that's amazing. And what it's based on is that the corn, or excuse me, the tomatoes, they act as a natural swamp cooler. And if you consider the energy uh, from the sun, so there's 3.41 BTU per hour per watt, just to explain how that, that correlates. So if you were um, the typical energy from the sun this time of the year, it's, it's about a, a thousand watts per square meter. And what I use, I've specified a four layer, eight millimeter polycarbonate. And that's pretty much across the board what I use. I, I did a, a little bit different on the dome over there. I used a 12 millimeter four layer on top. My splash pad greenhouse, I use a two layer eight millimeter. That way it heats up faster because the four layer eight millimeter, it sheds 29% of the light, it reflects it back. So only 71% of the light comes in. 
I don't have to put shade cloth on in the summer. A typical glazing like glass is 90%. A two layer polycarbonate would be on the order depending on the thickness of, of 78 to 79%. So I'm at 71% here. So it's, it's really valuable to consider that by creating a structure like this and strategically planting something that depending on your climate can act as a natural swamp cooler you can save significant money in terms of ventilation, infrastructure, and power requirements. And what it opens up our minds for is, is an amazing array of possibilities in terms of buying a simple or getting, building a simple structure, uh, you know, 500 or 1,000 square foot building, putting a Quonset hut style greenhouse over it with clear polycarbonate for that matter, and being able to target a specific species of plants within that greenhouse that acts as this natural swamp cooling mechanism. So just to put this into perspective, so you're getting about, based on the sun, so a thousand kilowatts per square meter, we're getting 71% of that going through a greenhouse. You're down around, you know, 700 watts a square meter. Converting that over to BTU per hour, realistically, you know, let's say a couple thousand BTU, because uh, it's 3.41 BTU um, per hour per watt. So you're dealing with, a, you know, a couple thousand BTU per hour per square meter. And if you run the numbers, what's a BTU? Let me, let me describe that. If I burn a match, so I, I strike a match and watch it burn, that's a BTU. The definition of a BTU, a British thermal unit, it's the amount of energy required to raise one pound of water. A pound is about a pint, a pint of water, one degree Fahrenheit. So if I had 100 BTU going into one pint of water, I'd raise it up 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But the evaporation value is, is incredible in comparison. I think off the top of my head, I think it's 970 BTU between water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and steam at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's this latent heat of, of evaporation. It's a phase change. That's why big cities use steam as a means of conveying energy because that phase change releases huge amounts of energy. Well, the same principle applies for certain species of plants in terms of the amount of water that evaporates from them. That's what keeps it so cool. And it's really a spectacular concept. And it really goes as far as the proof of concept for some of my greenhouses here because you don't need forced ventilation, depending on what species you're creating and what kind of glazing you use. So this was specifically targeted. Um, a couple of interesting experiments. I do have the white plastic down there. I spent an extra 500 bucks to put the white plastic down because I wanted to see if that would affect growth. To do that, unfortunately, I had to lay black plastic underneath it because the white plastic allowed um, light through and it, it resulted in weeds growing underneath it. So I had to actually pull it all off, put blast, black plastic down and put the white plastic on top. I am using it for storage, so it does bias the experiment a little bit. Uh, some of the stuff in the rafters here, this aluminum, and I have a sheet of polycarbonate over there uh, for, to, for resale. Obviously, some of that light coming in is reflecting out, but overall, I mean, just the fact that I'm 85 degrees inside, 88, 89 degrees outside in the shade, and that I don't have any vents for a greenhouse, wow. That's a powerful concept. I think it's pretty neat. Anyway, I wanted to share that idea, the concept uh, with uh, you. Um, I think there's a lot of things you could do with that, that concept in terms of minimizing overall infrastructure expense and optimizing um, systems to avoid carbon emissions. Anyway, thank you for your time. You have a great day.